steam. You know, you don't just hop into a boat and up you go like that. If the turbines are on, it's dangerous. Mm. You know, you don't want to get washed down over the curb on like, No. You know what I mean? Like, you'd go the wrong way and next thing you might be in control of the boat. Yeah. And it gets washed away. That kind of thing. So you need to know the river. Chances, not with water. Will you go? Go. Hi, Pat. How are you doing? Hi, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a few questions for you today. What is it that you do in your everyday job on the River Shannon? Well, I take a trip down nearly every day to see that everything's all right. I do a bit of work for Waterways Ireland and Limerick City Council. Now, what I do is I try to keep the navigation clear of obstructions like life bites floating around the place, trees, um, bicycles, shopping trolleys, yeah. you name it, it's down there someplace, you know, so mm. that's mostly what I want. Then I help people as well. Yes. Now, and that's not part of my job at all. I don't get paid for that, right. you know. If I did, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> would, yeah, everybody knows that. Uh, so, but I enjoy what I do. And do you, do you meet many people on the river every day? Only when the, the boats come down, people visiting, you know what I mean? The other guys I meet would be the fishermen, local fishermen. Yeah. No, they're on the river from, we say, February until the end of uh, September. How did you end up doing this and doing what you do and spending so much well, time on the river? We had a hut here years ago. My father had a hut here in the 40s and uh, right up to uh, we came out to live in the 50s around 56 i think we came here to live as i said the, the, the hut was kind of for the summer you know which was great come out in the summer and swimming and fishing and boating that was all was the thing you know mm. what i mean when they started dredging the river and uh, main drainage was coming in yeah i approached the contractors and I said, do you need someone with a boat? <laughs> there you go. And uh, they said, yeah. And I started working with um, Uniform Construction. Okay. They were dredging the Abbey River to make it navigable as well. Because when they were building the, the main drainage, they used the, the foundation of the, the, the weir, you know what I mean, where the pipe was under the water as a foundation for the weir to right. maintain a level in the abbey of about 1.6 metres. The way boating could come and go at any time. I, as I said, I was with the main drainage. Then when they said they'd uh, put boats in a marina, I approached Limerick City Council and Waterways Ireland uh, and said that maybe they were looking for someone to kind of keep an eye on things. Okay. So they jobbed me, and I've had it since, oh, about good. 10 or 12 years. And tell me about uh, your relationship with the river, because I know that you did some conservation with wild, wildlife, wildfowl. I know you were doing Oh, yeah, introduction I introduced geese. wildfowl in 1987, uh, ducks and geese. So you kind of have a personal stake in the, in the River Shannon and you have a personal relationship, I suppose, with it. Well, it's my life. The way, that's the way I look at it like, you know, I love it. Yeah. What, what do you love most about it? Well, I go down every day nearly, you know. I get yeah. bored if I don't. That's I it. think I'm missing something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so have you seen many changes in the river since you were growing up here, since you moved here first? Have you seen many, anything significant? Well, if you look at it, the Shannon scheme was only built in 1930 or 1929, it was finished, right? Yeah. Now, I was on the river in the 50s, we'll say that I was only a kid in the 40s, and the banks were as clear as anything, just grassy banks. Now they're all overgrown right. with trees. It's only 80 years in the life of the river, but there's an awful lot of changes. And a lot of uh, sandbanks have uh, grown up because the, the the levels have changed a little bit, you know, and the flows. Yeah. 
Yeah. So look at Plassey now, the way the trees are grown all over the place, those islands all over the place up there, near the university. They were never there in why, the old days. Why is that? Is that because of something... Less water coming down. You know, there's most of it is coming down to the power station now. Ah, you think that had a big, oh, yeah. big impact? Mm. And is there anything else apart from that that you think might have been? The fish have gone scarce, the yeah. salmon. Yeah. Very scarce. When I was a kid, sure, you go up the tailors and every second you see two or three fish in the air at one time. Salmon. But now, an odd one. Yeah. And that would be, we'll say, from about June onwards, May, June on. There's, I've seen hardly little or nothing now. It's, we're in May. Yeah. I don't think I've seen a salmon rise yet. Is that unusual? That's unusual. Right. And also the eels are very scarce. You know, lots of things like that. Right. Still a few otters around. Uh, mink have increased. Nice. Um, and do you think that the river will continue to change like that? Can you see any kind of impact that we're making at the moment? I don't see any big changes coming. Yeah. Yet. There's parts of it should be dredged, I'd say, to make it more navigable. You know, I'd say the university might do it sometime. Right. Because we surveyed that area there about four years ago, five years ago, from the university, actually from where the Mulcair comes out onto the Shannon, um, down through Plassey and down as far as Atlunker Bridge. But from Atlunker Bridge up to the head of the canal, is very rocky yeah. but i'd say the university could do that i'd say they have plans there okay in the long term they'll do something i said because good? they want to row they're rowing down there now that, that was never done down there before they're able to come down now to the head of the canal the, yeah. the guinness canal we'll call it and uh, i'd say that they will dredge the rest down as far as or the were or uh, at lumper bridge mm. if they did would be grand. And would that make it easier for boats? To it would, there? yeah, it would. Yeah, they could come down that bit further. You know. And do you think that would affect the, the animals and the biodiversity in the world? No, there? no? Don't. the water will be still there. You know what I mean? Yeah. The people have funny ideas about cutting down trees and things. The whole place is overgrown. You can't see the river in places. That's, uh, it's, it's, you know, and, and the, the department of what? The wildlife crowd, they don't want you to cut a tree. But I can see their point in it. Because you can't have every time they can hurry cutting mm. trees down. If they were controlled, you know, especially the banks, you know, the, the walkways. You need to be able to look at the river. Yeah. You know. Now take the island bank and the salmon weir bank in Corbley. That's now, the Abbey River goes up through the two of them. The island bank is falling asunder. People haven't used it in the last 15 years, right? It's overgrown. Yeah. Now, even the island bank, that's at St Mary's Park, that's getting overgrown as well. Now, if there were spaces left between that one bank could look over to the other, more people would use the Carberley bank or the Salmonware bank because you'd feel safe. Yeah. But when you're walking up that, you're... you're you can't see nothing. But if you can see somebody or they can see you, you'll feel safer. Yeah. So what do you think needs to happen for people to engage with the with the river more in the city? Nobody has turned to the river in the last 10 years. But they're beginning to, I think, you know, yeah. people are stirring it up a bit, like, you know, talking about it. Why do you think people are starting to, or do you think it's, it's because of the... Well, the, the river fest has helped a little. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they made some bubbles there now, too. They, they, didn't, they didn't open up the park, you know, getting in a Sarsfield house and uh, more people could have come through and see all the cruisers if they had opened up the potato market. But if it was open, they would have come right through. And it was just up at the lock bar, you know the lock bar? Yeah. And there was hundreds of people at the lock. Mm. Do you think even just something like, even just physical access, like just a, a pathway to the river, you think that would help people or yeah, signposts? Yeah, but it, it was there, but they didn't choose it. Yeah. So you think that the canals could be used more for tourism rather than actual yeah. functional... functional and I think Brian Goggin has the same idea. Okay. It isn't practical. Okay, well, we might hear about him later. Yep. Have you any plans for working with the river in the future? 
Do anything you'd like to do? Well, my dream always was to, to have a, a kind of a, a ferry boat or whatever you'd like to call it. Do you know what I mean? A passenger boat. Oh, okay. Uh, only for know? about six to eight people. Oh. Big numbers wouldn't... You know, I'd prefer a smaller boat and I'd prefer to do on front of King John's Castle and the Treaty Stone. You know, that kind of stretch, yeah. which a big boat can't. Where would you like to start and go from and what would you see along the way? Well, the, 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 uh, Arthur's Key would be the best place. Okay. So because you have the tourist office there and a lot of people come over to Arthur's Key to take yeah. photographs. Yeah. So that's the best spot. Okay. But it's a little bit dodgy. As I said, the different flows on the river can be dangerous. Yeah. You want a, a good boat, you, you know what I mean? If there's turbines on there now and you, your engine breaks down, you could be in the shite. You <laughs> could be in trouble. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. but you would want a cover on the boat. Oh, you would? Something like out in uh, the Caribbean or someplace, you know, with the sides, with, with just a, a canopy. Yeah. You don't want to be enclosed like a bus, you know, mm -hmm. looking out windows, yeah. like there's one up in Killaloo now, smashing job, but it's too enclosed, I think. Yes. People want to take photographs and see what's happening around them. Another thing you could do with the tide, if the tide was in, you know, you have to judge it. You'd, you'd find out no bother, there's a tide book there for that. You could pick them up at classes. Oh, yes. Mm. You could pick them. I was said there should be steps at the Absolute Hotel. So some are going to tap into all this now. Hope so. Because every, every idea I throw in the air, someone latches onto it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if somebody does but maybe it. something good That's will happen. It. So if you had steps at the Absolute Hotel, little gangway, yeah. wouldn't that be nice now? And tell me now, these boat trips that you'd like to do, where would you go? You'd go up? I'd go as far as down across you. So we up? The Abbey River. Up the Abbey River, um, up uh, pass out the, the railway bridge, yeah, and straight up into the tail race, and show them the power station, like you know, the pen stocks coming down the tubes, like you know, and the, where the boats go up. Yeah. Now you can go through if you like, but it would take too long between going up and coming down. How long does that take? Take you the best part of uh, an hour and a half. Oh wow, well, okay. And do you think people would, would take these tours? Do you think? Oh, I think so. Would? Yeah. Oh, I think there's an opening there. Any time of the year. Yeah. I'd say people would go in the winter and all. You know, there's always something to see. There is. You know, fox. Um, you know, a bit yeah. of wildlife. I suppose you have the bridges and you have Thoman Park. You can see all that from you the river. You can. You can get a photograph of Thoman Park down there, especially in the winter now when the, the leaves have gone off the trees. Mm. You know, you get the reflection on the water there when it's calm. Yeah. It's nice to see that. I saw it now the other day. So. Yeah. You're never, not going to move out of here anytime soon, are you? You don't have any plans to leave. The only time I'll be going out of here is in a box. Ah. <laughs> well, that will be for a while anyway, then. <laughs> well, hopefully. Yeah. Little... <laughs> Not a couple of years, we yeah. might get out of it. <laughs> that, that's great, Pat. Thank you so much yeah. for your time. Not at all. It's great to talk to you every time, yeah, as always.